So today we are going to be doing the book review of God versus Government, and it was written by Nathan Beesnitz, Boosnitz, please forgive me, and James Coates. And um, the first portion of this book is literally, if you're familiar with Nathan, Nathan Boosnitz, he is an elder at Grace Community Church in California, which is pastored by um, John MacArthur. And of course, James Coates is the teaching pastor at Grace Life Church in, why did I forget? Is it Ontario? Oh my gosh, how did I forget that quickly? Yeah, it's it's near Edmonton. Canada. Yeah, near Edmonton, uh, Canada. So during the 2020 um, C-19 lockdowns, um, both of these churches did not comply in some way, shape or form with the government's mandate to shut down. Um, whether they shut down for a week or a couple of weeks and then they decided they were going to stay open. However, they did not follow the uh, the plan, so to speak, of the government. And if you're interested in this, if you, I'm sure you heard the story of Grace Community Church here in the United States and, of course, Grace Life Church in Canada because James Coates actually went to jail for this. If you're interested, the, the opening portion of the book, the first 118 pages, are the story of Grace Community Church, how they stayed open, how um, Pastor John continued to preach, and the congregation uh, just said, look, we, we don't like this online thing. We, we want to be in fellowship with one another. And they came back. And then, of course, the story of James Coates and how his church did a very similar thing. They closed down for, shortly, and then they decided they were they, they're mandated by God to remain open. They did that, and then all of the drama that ensued. So um, it, it's a really good behind the scenes review of what happened, the story of what happened. Um, they give you lots of details that you may have heard of in other instances. So of course you're like, oh, all right, that, that's what I heard in the news or, oh, that's what I heard from. Because Tim, you talked about um, Grace Community Church. You almost did it in real time. So you say, oh yeah, I remember when Tim said that or, or whatnot like that, or you heard it somewhere on the interweb. But just to hear, these are boots on the ground. This is a um, eyewitness report of what happened at Grace Life, at Grace Community Church. It was excellent. I thought they did a fantastic job. Um, now, granted, they um, they make no qualms about it, that they believe that uh, churches are mandated by Christ to stay open. And that um, that was what drove them to making this decision. Um, and and to remain open or to, to go back to being open and whatnot like that and to kind of buck the system. And, you know, some instances, you know, Grace Community Church had to go to court. In an in instance, James Coates had to go to jail for almost a month and a half, things like that. But they knew that they were following the orders of their king, not the orders of the government. And I just thought that was excellent. There was a couple of points I want to bring out. Um, and I will flip through. Tim, if you, if you want to jump in with any commentary on that first opening portion, I will uh, gladly let you do that. Uh, that was good synopsis. Um, yeah, I think uh, that uh, they, they definitely um, had a strong conviction about it. One thing I will add, though, is they, uh, they believed that really the issue was you know, who's in charge of this when yes. it comes to the local church. I I could tell, and, and maybe we'll reference it later too, that, that they, they were fine with churches looking at the situation and deciding what was the wisest course of action. And it took them time mm -hmm. as well in each of their cases to decide the right course of action. The issue primarily for them though, even from the beginning, Grace Community Church uh, I'll read it quickly here from page 22. The elders of Grace Church considered and independently consented to the original government order, not because we believe the state has a right to tell churches when, whether, or how to worship. To be clear, we believe that the original orders were just as much an illegitimate intrusion of state authority into ecclesiastical matters as we believe it is now. However, because we could not possibly have known the true severity of the virus— and because we care about the people, as our Lord did, we believe guarding public health against serious contagion is a rightful function of Christians as well as civil government. So what they're saying, though, ultimately is the decision, because they're trying to submit to the Lord as a church, 
should be the decision of the church leaders, not the government telling them when and how to worship. That is correct. Uh, so that 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 was really their their conviction at heart was who has rightful authority over church worship. I love it. And I had that highlighted as really what I thought was like the thesis statement of the first 118, 117 pages of the book, because that's really what the whole beginning of the book is about. Like this church believes that the government doesn't have the right to make that decision for us. And therefore we have to, we, we must follow what God has said and what Christ has laid out before us rather than man. So I, I totally agree with you. I thought it was a, that was an excellent point. Um, I will say this just to, just to give you a little idea. If you wanted a highly opinionated, what I think type of uh, book, this is not a book for you. Um, every page is just, and I hope this shows up in the, in the video, but every page, it doesn't show up, Jason, because <laughs> reasons. Why did I do, why would I even try that? Every page I, I went through when I was reading it, I highlighted all of the Bible passages where they literally give you a chapter and verse to, uh, to reference. Every page probably has at least two, three, four different highlighted areas where they're this is our biblical response. And the reason I bring that up is because it's not just, you know, Pastor John just wants to uh, do his own thing or uh, James Coates just didn't want to follow the, the government's mandates. No, they, they, they had a very strong, solid biblical reason for doing that. And I think that really helped in, in my mind, at least see the like, man, this made sense because they're, they're making the claim from a biblical stance. And I did take the time to look up the scriptures as well. So it wasn't just like, oh, they just threw a Bible verse at the beginning of the book and it threw one at the end and then everything else in the middle is kind of baptized by those two verses. No, it's all throughout this book. And I mean, literally, I made a joke about it and I, I reached out to James Coates and Aaron Coates while I was doing the Julie Roy's book. And I, sh I sent her a picture and James, a picture of a page. And I want to say it was page 38 and 39. I said, you all use more scripture in, on these two pages, 38 and 39, then Julie Roy's using the entire book. <laughs> I mean, you use more Bible on two pages than she did in 200 pages. So, I, and I, I thought that was good because they really exhaust the fact that they were trying to make a biblical case. Now, whether, wherever we, we landed on that, you know, C-19 debate, I think we can have that discussion and still be brothers and sisters in the faith, but we can't say that. And that was the thing I told Tim. Um, this wasn't just something that James and, and Nathan and John MacArthur, they just wanted to buck the system and do their own thing. But no, they, they, they had a really strong biblical argument for this. And I really thought that was actually refreshing. Um, and, the, and the thing that is even in, more interesting to me is this is just why they chose to open their church. In chapter, in part two, where they decide, where they really lay out the biblical argument for it, I think they use more scripture. So, I mean, because there's actually a page where I, I think literally, I really wish this would show up on the camera. It's, it's page 124 and 125. I, I'm not even being funny. <laughs> they make so much Bible reference. It's almost, there's almost no other words on the page except scripture for why they chose the, the uh, five biblical principles. It was just amazing. And again, it really helped solidify that this was not them making their own decision on their own, but rather making a biblical case for their conscience and why their conscience would not allow them to follow. So that was just my little mini, uh, mini sermon at there, Tim, did you have something else you had to say? Uh, I, I agree. I think, you know, it's easy to think from the outside that they just wanted to buck against uh, that whatever the government was saying oh, yeah. or do their own thing. But actually, Pastor James Coates, if you read the, the first part of this book, it's fascinating to get the inside perspective on what, what happened and, and how they came about their decisions and how hard it was actually for him to deal with the pressure uh, not only from the outside, but even even in the church, it's not like everybody in in their church totally agreed. Yeah. So what it, what it forced them to do, and I think he says this, is it forced them to really 
think through things very thoroughly and and it helped them actually even even some of the people who disagreed within the church it helped force them to really dig into the scripture and be able to articulate clearly where they were coming from but then when it came to the pressure of the government and i really appreciated this i knew that it must have been hard for him to go to jail mm-hmm. but it's it's different when you hear it from his lips what yes. he actually went through and how hard it was for him and he's so honest about even the anxiety that he had to give that to the lord at times it was very hard and it kind of reminds us that i think if he if he could have found a reason to get around that conviction he he may have done so but it was something he 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 felt compelled by scripture and uh and so i i i agree i don't think it was like this heart set desire to try to try to buck against the system certainly not to make a, a name for himself or draw attention to himself it really i i think you can see in this book came out of a heart of conviction desire to be obedient to the lord and be faithful as a church leader.